Today is December 7th. It's the 342nd day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. It's 7.48 in the morning Hawaiian time. The first wave of more than 180 Japanese fighter planes approaches the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor from the southwest and attacks the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet, destroying almost 20 ships, 300 airplanes, and killing 2,403 military personnel and 68 civilians. On this day, in 1941, the Pacific Fleet is crippled in a mere two hours. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor is launched from six Imperial Japanese aircraft carriers that have crept silently across 4,000 miles of the Pacific Ocean over the past two weeks. The attack on this day is a surprise, but it's not unexpected. Many in the U.S. believe war with Japan is inevitable in the year prior to this day in 1941. Japan is a nation with very limited resources, and their imperialist policy sees them securing much-needed raw materials elsewhere, particularly in China. Japan invades China in 1937, the Second Sino-Japanese War, which leads to economic sanctions and a trade embargo against Japan by the U.S. and Britain. The aim is to restrict Japan's access to money and oil in order to rein them in. But the embargo only makes Japan more determined to expand their dominance in the Pacific. They seek to replace that flow of oil with a supply from the Dutch East Indies. And the attacks on this day are a means of neutralizing the strategic threats posed by the U.S. and Great Britain to this new supply chain, as well as expanding their reach by, for instance, securing tin and rubber resources in Malaya. On the other side of the international dateline, it's already December 8th. But only a few hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor on this day in 1941, Japanese planes bomb American bases in the Philippines along with the city of Manila. Members of the U.S. Army Air Corps stationed at Clark Field have been listening to reports of the destruction at Pearl Harbor all morning, and when they see two flights of bombers on approach, some at Clark Field think it's the Navy coming to protect them. But then the 50 to 60 bombers let loose a barrage of bombs for more than an hour, wiping out nearly all of the B-17s and P-40s on the airfield. The Japanese also attack Guam, Wake Island, Hong Kong, Thailand, and Singapore and other parts of Malaya. By the end of this day in 1941, Japan has struck a debilitating blow against U.S. and British forces and territories all around the Pacific, while greatly extending their sphere of control in Southeast Asia. But the most devastating attack on this day is on Hawaii. 2,400 soldiers and sailors killed and nearly 1,200 more wounded. The service men and women at Pearl Harbor defend their battleships, cruisers, and destroyers as best they can, though most attempts seem futile. Less than 10% of the attacking zeros are shot down. Simultaneously, the men and women at Pearl Harbor put their lives at risk to rescue their fellow soldiers and sailors from the crippled vessels on Battleship Row and to support their comrades in the heat of battle. For their actions on this day, 15 of them will receive the Medal of Honor, the United States of America's highest military honor. 11 of them are awarded posthumously, such as Medal of Honor recipient Chief Boson Edwin J. Hill, whose citation reads, quote, For distinguished conduct in the line of his profession, extraordinary courage and disregard of his own safety during the attack on the fleet in Pearl Harbor by Japanese forces on December 7, 1941. During the height of the strafing and bombing, Chief Boson Hill led his men of the line handling details of the USS Nevada to the Keys, cast off the lines, and swam back to his ship. Later, while on the forecastle, attempting to let go the anchors, 
he was blown overboard and killed by the explosion of several bombs. His is not terribly different from the heroism displayed by 23-year-old Ensign Herbert C. Jones, whose citation reads, quote, Ensign Jones organized and led a party which was supplying ammunition to the anti-aircraft battery of the USS California after the mechanical hoists were put out of action when he was fatally wounded by a bomb explosion. When two men attempted to take him from the area which was on fire, he refused to let them do so, saying in words to the effect, quote, Leave me alone, I'm done for. Get out of here before the magazines go off and 26-year-old machinist's mate first class, Robert R. Scott, whose Medal of Honor citation reads, quote, The compartment in the USS California in which the air compressor to which Scott was assigned as his battle station was flooded as the result of a torpedo hit. The remainder of the personnel evacuated that compartment, but Scott refused to leave, saying words to the effect, quote, this is my station, and I'll stay and give them air as long as the guns are going. The citations for the 15 Medal of Honors awarded for actions on this day all tell similar tales of extraordinary courage. They're reflections of the devotion to duty and disregard for their own lives displayed by thousands of others on the ground and in the waters of Pearl Harbor during the surprise attack by Imperial Japanese forces on what President Roosevelt calls a date which will live in infamy, on this day in 1941. There are 24 days left in the year.